corona virus quarantine lockdown and social distancing has become the normal realities of human race you are now paranoid washing hands numerous times and religiously wearing a face mask and distancing yourself from people you love and care you spend more time at home thinking worrying tossing and turning in bed every night waking up exhausted tired hoping for a miracle to miraculously appear and make the past year look like a horrible dream do you want to change your mindset stop washing hands zillions of times religiously wearing a face mask alienating friends who are not vaccinated and start socializing kissing cuddling your loved ones with no fear let me help you identify the driver that drives your thought to go spiraling out of control diving deep into an emotional black hole making you scared my name is kadiyali shrivatsa i have worked in hospitals in intensive care and critical care for more than 30 years and as a gp until 2021 i published three books to share my knowledge created an application to help medical students junior doctors and nurses make informed decision to differentiate common from serious illness and help them conquer the fear of germs scientists were preoccupied with whether or not they could they did not stop to think if they should it's ironic a fantasy movie jurassic park aptly describes the medical crisis we face today my article superbug pandemic and how to prevent them was published in 2017 and my keynote address the elephant in the doctor's room as the chairman of euroscience infectious disease conference in rome in 2018 graphically explained the crisis we are in today illness is an illusion that you harbor because a doctor who performed tests scans to prove they are right inflicted the fear of hospitalization and death you spent hours days thinking worrying and popping up pills that seldom cure to make matters worse the corona virus quarantine social distancing lockdowns implemented by evil people based on theoretical idealism and not understanding the practical realities of managing a pandemic has ripped apart families bankrupted businesses and now the nations illness is an illusion but the fear of infection created using social media news channels is real stop asking friends relatives and searching for information in the internet performing tests abusing antibiotics that kill the germs you need to help you survive i have diagnosed serious contagious infections based on the story of an illness as patients lived experienced and remembered it i requested tests to confirm my diagnosis to protect myself from litigation and not to undermine your confidence yes I was afraid of infections soon after graduation some 50 years ago once i conquered the fear i continued to work as a doctor coming in contact with germs every day and most nights until 2021 you may think i was washing my hands billions of times used face mask gowns and dressed like an astronaut and took shower after resuscitating very infected patients to 
protect myself. No, I am not the hero who saves life, but diagnose hundreds of adults and children with flu, meningitis, cholera, TB, hepatitis B, dengue fever, typhoid, superbug, HIV and AIDS for more than 40 years, but never got infected, including COVID. It was not the vaccination, drugs, multivitamins or probiotics that helped protect me from infections, but the germs in and on my body that did. Stop treating the germs that entered your body soon after birth as your enemy and start loving them and respecting them. They are stronger, more intelligent, thrive on you and protect you. There are 10 to 100 trillion bacteria cells in and around us and we could not live without them. Like Abraham Lincoln said, I don't like this man but have to get to know him. I spent my entire working life warning about a pandemic, investing time and energy, observing, developing new techniques, endured pain and suffered. I felt very sad to watch my beautiful teenage daughter and her friends dressed like princesses attending school graduation day wearing a face mask for defending my ethics and creating a system to protect you, your family and the community. It is not us, the doctors, but the pharmaceutical companies, device manufacturers and people in power who did not act when they should have. Over-enthusiastic urge to encourage you to consult a doctor abuse antibiotics did not start until penicillin was discovered in 1950s. Performing tests and investigations was unheard of when I graduated as a doctor in 1980s. It was our high-minded state and greed to cash in that robbed your confidence of self-diagnosis and managing common illness at home. The of a doctor is to listen, examine, diagnose infections early to prevent complications and postpone death. They must offer a solution and not depend upon tests, investigations to diagnose any illness or prescribe drugs that seldom cure. Initially, I created a simple tool called PAT, the Pediatric Assessment Tool to educate junior doctors to differentiate minor from serious illness. Admit the ones who need admission. Identify infected individuals and isolate them to prevent spread of infection in the hospitals. I expect you to change your mindset, take responsibility, reclaim your free will to protect your family, friends and your loved ones and continue to live life as you were used to in the past. You must know the fear of infection is real. But I think it is different from other forms of mental illness. I do not label this as a hypochondriac, somatization disorder or say it's all in your mind. We cannot treat this behavior using drugs or counseling. 
This is the fear of the unknown. And so you need to, the knowledge and experience to help change the way you think and behave. When my daughter explained how her friends alienate people who are not vaccinated or wearing a face mask, I started searching for information to help her and her friends conquer the fear of infections but found none. I think I am an expert because for more than 40 years I have worked in hospitals, managed numerous patients with very infectious disease and help doctors conquer fear. Here's an example to help you understand why you need my help. Suppose you are vaccinated and staying away from friends, family who are not vaccinated. You are alienating people who love you, assuming they will infect you. This is not true. Vaccinated people will shed mild form of viruses that will infect the unvaccinated person and help them develop immunity. This is what we call as the herd immunity. Vaccinations help reduce the number of people getting infected at the same time so that hospitals can cope to treat fewer patients who are seriously ill. Now you can see how I can share the right information to change dysfunctional thought and help you conquer fear. It is not the behavior that needs to be changed, but you must identify the driver that drives your imagination thought and feeling. When you address the drivers that trigger the flow of thoughts, that spirals out of control, something very magical will happen in your mind. You will be calmer, receptive to commands, and change the behavior for good. Knowledge of health is knowledge of life. The knowledge I share will certainly boost your self-confidence. As Albert Einstein said, do not be the one who watch evil people destroy the world. Be the one like me. Use the knowledge, experience to help protect your family, friends and your community. Life was given to us a billion years ago. What have we done with it? A menacing threat to human life is re-emerging. been our worst fear for decades. Prophets of doom have now raised the specter of a different kind of holocaust, a swift and lethal plague that no vaccine or drug can stop.
a world authority on the 1918 flu, Professor Oxford's concern is that a human variant flu virus poses a similar imminent threat. It could kill tens of millions of people. Yet only a few countries are doing anything about it. Of 120 governments in the world, and about 15 of them have, the rest of them aren't bothering. We have to move into more and more prepared. If we don't? If we don't, I think this virus could come and strike at the community, destroy our societies as we know them, create huge panic in countries. Pandemic influenza happens when a flu virus changes so much that humans have no immunity to the new virus. This is how it might happen. <coughs> Sorry, mate. Just a couple of days ago, he was backpacking in Asia, a holiday ending in Thailand. <coughs> On a crowded bus in Bangkok, just before returning home, he sat next to a person with bird flu. He's now infected with the same virus. With his every breath, Millions of influenza viruses are being released and infecting others. If one person lands in Sydney and detects and starts to spread it, I mean, every person who's infected will, will infect another person. You get an explosive outbreak of this completely, uh, well, t almost totally lethal virus. It would be terrible. I mean, people would just die like flies. We're talking about a situation where we have a threat that we think can be a major threat, but we don't know it will ever happen. So it's like a Cold War situation. If you... And so we're preparing for something that we don't know will happen, but it would be irresponsible not to prepare. No one who lives through it will forget it. And so ordinary life, as we know it, uh, will cease. Is that the health system would be overwhelmed, with major cities and towns closing down as people avoid contact. Even the possibility of a breakdown of public order as people demand access. Then there's the damage to the economy with a predicted collapse in world trade and travel. This is one of the major threats to our way of life. Scientist believes that entire cities could be wiped out. A menacing threat to human life is re-emerging. Science can identify a virus quickly, but the world remains vulnerable. Smallpox, cholera, new strains of tuberculosis. I don't need to point to some hypothetical disease in the future. I'll point to Zika and say we're not ready. Clearly we're not ready. So before the patient gets here, we need to have... There's a lot of work that needs to happen in hospitals and in public health departments to make sure we are ready for the next pandemic. Who identifies these people? I mean, who says you can have the drug and you can't? And who's going to stop the person who hasn't got the drug, murdering the person who has got it for his share of the drug? Uh, there's going to be a big black market, people who decide to sell their drugs to other people. There's going to be uh, fake drugs on the internet, all sorts of problems. We will give government the best possible scientific advice as to which groups of people need to be protected. That becomes then a governmental decision on how to run the country. The history of Earth is unimaginably long. If it were sped up to the equivalent of a single day, all of humankind 
from the earliest skeletons to the invention of the iPhone would have occurred in only the last four seconds. Dinosaurs were still roaming Earth about 20 minutes before that. But the creation of our planet occurred more than 23 hours earlier. Two cycles on this clock, or 4.5 billion years ago. These microscopic creatures have dominated the planet for over three billion years, and they can be found everywhere. They can live in boiling water, they can live in freezing temperatures, they can live in the center of solid rock, and in fact, if we look at our own bodies, we are basically walking bacteria. There are on the order of 10 to 100 trillion bacterial cells on and in us, every one of us. We could not live without bacteria. The notion that one organism can eat another like a lion eats its prey in the jungle. Just like creatures in the visible world, microscopic life, like molds and bacteria, will fight each other for survival. In 1812, the year the New England Journal of Medicine and Surgery first started to publish, medical knowledge in the U.S. and in the world was limited. We had no understanding of infectious disease. Health outcomes were particularly poor for women and children. Surgery was unsanitary and performed without anesthesia. Cancer was largely unrecognized because so few people lived long enough to develop it. It's 1928 and a Petri dish left next to an open window is about to revolutionize modern medicine. In a moment of epiphany, Fleming realizes the mold is defending itself by secreting something that destroys the bacteria. It's penicillin, the first antibiotic. This wonder drug and other antibiotics will go on to treat the untreatable, saving millions of lives. And the discovery of penicillin led to a great opening of the era of medicine. The realization that a simple mold could produce an effective drug inspires scientists to search for other organisms that might do the same. New medicines derived from molds, funguses, and even bacteria flood the market. Tetracycline, cephalosporin, erythromycin, and Called antibiotics, meaning against life, these miracle drugs can stop infections like pneumonia, gangrene, and meningitis. Of antibiotics discovered in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, the faucet is running dry. Has the clock really been ticking towards a post-antibiotic future? Because each time we used them, misused them, and overused them, we gave the bacteria a chance to become resistant. Scientists have been unable to bring new antibiotics to market. Of the hundreds of drugs currently under government review, only a handful are for bacterial infection. And that's bad news for the public. You know, in fact, I think they should be terrified. It's taken us 12 years to get tigacycline anywhere near the mark. This makes these drugs commercially unsuccessful, and it really discourages other people from going into the field. As the general population lives longer and longer thanks to all the advances in medical science in the last century, a new report from the World Bank says that we've also created drug-resistant infections that have gone unchecked could kill some 10 million people 
by the year 2050. COVID-19 has, you know, certainly to some extent thrown gas on the fire uh, by a sort of forcing our hand to use antibiotics just because these kids are so ill. Dr. Schleiss says kids hospitalized with COVID come in with high fevers and inflammatory reactions, making it tough to immediately rule out a bacterial infection so they may be given antibiotics unnecessarily. That the balance of microbes on Earth are needed to sustain life and are indispensable to the planet's microbiome and could ultimately be the cause of our demise. Plague, influenza, Ebola, the most contagious and deadly diseases in the world could be on our doorstep overnight. Would we recognize the symptoms? Can we treat the disease or even keep it from spreading? The margin of error? Zero. At stake for the medical team, their own lives, the safety of their families, and the community where they live. 2020. Climate change is headline news. Forests burn. Scientists predict rising sea levels. There is a sense that time for action is running out. And then comes COVID. It's a fast-moving pandemic. A million dead and counting. It's 2050. The cupboard is bare. It's biotic future. Where drug-resistant infections kill 10 million people a year where chemotherapy is unsafe, where simple surgeries are too risky to perform, where the world's biggest child killer, pneumonia, is now unstoppable. Is this just a projection? And against this backdrop, a chance to change the narrative on that other looming global catastrophe. Because everyone sees now, we can mobilize. We can take individual and collective responsibility, and we must be prepared. The resistant bacteria reach the skin or intestines via food or water, but the germs are also transmitted further. If someone gets ill or is injured, they can pass on serious infections. If antibiotics don't work, the bacteria quickly spread and can lead to life-threatening blood poisoning. The bacteria are part of our ecosystem, around us, within us, trillions upon trillions, helpful as well as harmful. And resistance is natural, to be expected, until a random mutation enables the bacteria to overcome the drug. At each line, the antibiotic is 10 times more concentrated, but there are also more mutations. It's evolution by natural selection, only very, very fast. We live in a petri dish too, but by increased misuse, we only encouraged the mutations. We overprescribed, of course we did. Medicine is not an exact science. Diagnosis is difficult, and people expect to be cured. The building is catching fire, the edifice is crumbling, the cupboard is running bare. In some ways, COVID has made the problem worse, and large quantities of antibiotics have been prescribed to patients. If it motivates us, if the world mobilizes, individuals, doctors, scientists, yes, governments and policy makers too, the solutions are scientific, but they're also economic, and they are societal. It's a collective effort. It's not a sort of an imaginary projection that it's going to get worse. We, we know that's going to happen. The point is we do have the opportunity to do something about it. How threats humanity faces today. It occurs when bacteria, viruses, fungi and parasites change over time and antimicrobial medicines are no longer effective against them. Anyone, anywhere, at any age, can get a drug-resistant infection. This could mean longer treatment, hospital stays, higher health costs, lifelong disability, or even death. Antimicrobials, including antibiotics, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasites, are the backbone of modern medicine. They allow us to treat deadly infections successfully and make essential health services safer for everyone. However, the overuse and misuse of antimicrobials are the main drivers of drug-resistant pathogens. World Antimicrobial Awareness Week is an opportunity to draw attention to this urgent global health challenge. We need as many people as possible to spread awareness, stop resistance. By practicing responsible use of antimicrobials, 
and by following the advice of your healthcare providers, you can help preserve antimicrobials and prevent drug resistance. Help us spread awareness and play your part in our shared responsibility to keep these drugs working for everyone, everywhere. We're all in this together. Next interview, joining us via Skype, and this time we go to Germany as we continue to travel the world on this show. And joining us is Cadi Ali Servista. Yeah, the name of the book is My or M A Y A. Welcome, uh, welcome so much uh, for, for joining us here. What's the book about? Why did you write it? It's what, what's the significance of Maya? Uh, Maya is a word, it meant like medical advice you access people who are sick. Um, just rush to a doctor without thinking why, uh, you know, what the doctor is going to do and what uh, they expect out of the doctor. So what happens is, this is a book which educates patients before going to a hospital or seeing a doctor. Medical advice you access. They go into Google, search the symptoms and then they look at the small prints. They don't look at the um, common conditions. They look at tumors and things like that and they get panicked. So to prevent that, I've written a book which educates them how doctors derive a diagnosis. That's why it's called Maya. Maya is a, a word called illusion, a veil of illusion. It's an illusion to believe that doctors can save your life. So it actually demystifies healthcare and uh, a book helpful for patients all over the world. What are you a doctor of, sir? Yeah, I was working in a hospital as a staff doctor in a pediatric intensive care and general pediatrics. This is where all the critical ill people come um, every time. And I had to diagnose illness very fast. So I have practiced this technique where I can derive the diagnosis very quickly so that I don't do any mistakes. What proportion of people are unhappy with the healthcare system that we currently have? In America, they are worried about the cost and insurance. In England, national health service is completely crumbling up. They don't have staff, and every day there are nurses, and they're paying 151 billion pounds on compensation. People are dying. 44,000 people died last year with sepsis, and that is a disgrace to medical profession. Could you summarize the important problems that you encounter daily as a physician? Uh, that's what I did. In 2003, I started collecting the, the common symptoms which makes patients anxious to ask the emergency appointment. When I compiled a list of uh, thousands of them, I came to know the symptoms which are very common, like headache, flu, fever, uh, cough, uh, skin in rashes, uh, tummy pain, and things like that. And these are the common symptoms which makes patients feel anxious. And uh, what I have done is I have uh, reduce the symptoms of all the disease into nine common ones and based on that patients uh, can get the advice. That's what I've done. What can your book do to help people? Basically what it does is uh, if a patient has a symptom they can go and read up about that symptom. Now even at a mare's knees or a cough an otherwise perfectly fine person starts fearing for his life. While most of our doctors have proved themselves to be the ultimate heroes in these difficult times, there are some who think of this dilemma as a money-making opportunity. Even if someone is not affected by the pandemic, 
he still has to go through many tests, investigation, and quarantine until the final results. So how can you protect yourself from this pandemic and all its hassles? Well, Dr. Maya is here to help you out. I am an expert that has helped many people to protect themselves from the pandemic and superbugs. How would you describe your mission? You also talk about apps to help fight infections. That's right. This is based Explain. On yeah. The app is basically it asks you to put in three symptoms, and when you put three symptoms, uh, it will show you the color, whether red, green, or yellow, and uh, it gives you it gives you all the information what you need to know about these three symptoms. And then um, there is another app for the doctor. The doctor can use the Maya Doctor app and create his own list of symptoms. So I am just trying to set up a group like a WhatsApp group in a local area linking doctors and the patients. This will help me to identify three common symptoms so that I can easily pinpoint and say there is an infection epidemic occurring in um, you know, Ethiopia or somewhere because the symptoms are identified and you can mark it as infectious diseases. And if a cluster comes, we can quickly identify the health place where the infection is start spreading and we can call it now. We don't want that infection to spread all over the world before the WHO or the CDC decides what to do. And that is a disaster. If they take eight months, millions would have died. So that's why my app is very useful to identify the location, hospital, country, state, and even at home. And that's the idea I released the app. Well, most of us are confused and anxious because we can't separate serious illness from minor illness. And then it introduces anxiety into the equation. That can be disastrous. How do you, how do you approach that? That's exactly what Maya does. Maya, I, I differentiate between serious and not serious infection. I'll give you an example. If fever, if a child has high fever, people always assume, oh, high fever, the child must be unwell. To tell you frankly, high fever is not one I will worry about. Why? Because virus infections will increase the temperature quite high. Bacteria is like humans. They don't like the temperature to go above 38 degrees. So the temperature usually drops. And based on that, we can differentiate between virus and the uh, bacterial infection. Bacterial infection is the one which will kill. Virus infection rarely kills. Who did you write the book for? For the patients. For people like you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Absolutely. You... I'm All sorry. Right. Very, very common sense uh, approach. And it's the simplest book you can read. It is cheaper than an encyclopedia. And it gives you precise information what you need to know. All right. You know, you've, you've got delays in consultations. Uh, and here we go. Anxiety again. People are afraid of the, uh, the fear of cost, infections, <laughs> false reassurance. It's a, it's a very complex uh, it's a very complex issue that often results in devastating consequences, isn't it? That's right. I've done a lot of reading and studying for this for almost twelve years. Uh, the psychology of a patient, a patient who has a serious illness, who has a tumor or a cancer going on, he subconsciously knows that he has a cancer. The reason he comes late to see a doctor is because he doesn't want his diagnosis to be confirmed. A person who has a common illness, which is not serious, is the one who gives me trouble. They want a quick fix treatment. And this is, this is very well known. Why do people with cancer always have a delayed diagnosis? Because the patient doesn't come to the doctor. They want to keep away. Maya demystifies that. It will make you run to a doctor when you have to. And even if it is a common symptom or a serious symptom, it can say, go to the hospital now. And that's all it does. It doesn't give you a diagnosis. It tells you the possibilities, but it will make you go to the hospital, consult a doctor when you need. So, wasted consultations are reduced, cost is reduced, patient running around with infectious disease in the train and going to the hospital, giving it to everybody is also reduced. I think we have to stop this habit of just being dependent on a doctor to diagnose an illness. Do you have a concluding statement you'd like to make, sir? I would expect my colleagues doctors and people to download my apps, link themselves up, create a group and help themselves. I would like to monitor the infection going around when it happens, an epidemic happens, we should stop it at play. And I 
sincerely hope you can use my my bring to you Dr. Kadiali Sirvasta Sir Meet Dr. Ali. He's just gone to visit Mary, who has been having a fever and rashes with spots. She has also not been able to get out of bed due to her weak legs. After examining Mary and seeing that her symptoms are new to him, Dr. Ali decides to look up Mary's symptoms on Google, but finds none. He then decides to take a picture of Mary's rashes, logs on to Dr. Maya app, and posts a description of Mary's rash, accompanied by the picture, to seek help from other specialists on the app. Dr. Rashid, who has seen Dr. Ali's posts on Dr. Maya, contacts Dr. Ali and advises him to call 999 and ask for an ambulance with a nurse and PPE to transfer them to an isolation hospital where they'll get the help they need. With Dr. Maya, doctors can easily share information about emerging infections, identify clusters in the community, and prevent the spread of infections. Visit now to learn more. Or talking between UK and African countries and India. So he's doing a lot of things for health uh, uh, preventative, like preventative measures and he's developed his own app uh, so which he'll be talking on. So I think we'll be looking forward to hear about what steps uh, he's taking uh, to take some preventative steps in infection control. Thank you. I've lived in India for 30 years. So Sometimes I should sit and wonder. Was I born to live like that? Because it's like a confined area, I don't see any human beings who are happily running around. So the church used to often invite me and say, you play God. I said, what? You play God. Would you please come and give us a talk? How do you cope? Because I'm dealing with children. The time. And it is true. We are not God. We play God. Another interesting thing about death. Has anybody heard um, dead ringer? Dead ringer. Anybody? No? Yeah, I think you used to bury them with the tombs so in case they woke up they could ring it and That's right. It still exists in UK. Because it's just the turn of 19th century. Not long, long time ago. And hence our department, our profession changed all that. To tell you frankly, if you go to Russia, they still keep these dead bodies for 10 days. Do you know that? I've been approached by somebody saying, you said a cream we can put it on the patient who's dead. I said, for what? Infection. That's my favorite topic. I talk about infection, and I've been talking about it for the past 30 years. This is where I live. Very clean, nice. Five Nobel Prize winners live there. 80,000 people, 20,000 students. Huge German town for Tübingen. That is where I had the inspiration of what I did. My name is Dr. Srivatsa. I would like to start with a quote from the movie Jurassic Park. Scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could. They did not stop to think if they should. It's ironic, a fantasy movie aptly describes the medical crisis we face today. I'm talking about antibiotic resistant bacterial and emerging infections like Ebola. Humanity is now facing a mortal enemy that surpasses our own intelligence. A tiny microorganism that has indeed brought us to our knees. It has learned from us, adopted to us and now exploits our genetic vulnerability with lethal precision. There they are. This is the fungus. They just multiply really the future. When I said about this 30 years ago, they didn't listen to me. This is what happened. More than 50% of the people who died are people like you. Really, I don't have to do anything. I have enough money to go around the country, have a good time, have a party. But I can't ignore you. Why? Because you are like my children. 
It is us who created this. It's our fault. So now I said, I have two ways to cope with, with my problem. I either denied it, I just forgot about it. I've done the mistake, but I did not tell anybody because nobody else will know. Now I'm rectifying my errors. That's where I come. So this is basically happening in India. I walk to hospital and say, is there any infected? No, 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 it's all in England. It's somewhere else. Total denial. There is not one person, I can give you a list like that. Maybe dying here. And everybody shitting bricks. And you can see that in India. Only two. Yeah? What about South India? What about Bangalore? It doesn't happen anywhere. Why? It's all the greed. And especially people like me who come out and say, gosh, wait a minute, man, you've done some mistake, haven't we? No way. I'm the professor of the universe. And I know what I'm talking about. No, I don't know, sir. Please tell me. No, you can't challenge me. I'm the professor. He only knows about X genes somewhere in chromosomes 21. He's done research on that all his life. He does not know where the head is and where the leg is. But he's a professor of cardiology or some stupid thing like that. We respect them. I have lived with them for 30 years, I tell you. I know how much, how many papers come out there. The professor is sitting there having a cup of coffee. Somebody asked him, oh, 31% of this, then 21% of that. I said, how can you say that? He said, I know. You can't challenge him, can you? He's Lord somebody. And that's it. We started seeing infections coming in. MRSA, 1989, 16th December, the first case of MRSA died right in front of me, six years old boy. He was going black from his foot upwards. We didn't know what it was. Everybody said, it's a normal common sir. That's right. Normal common sir killing like that. Dangerous. Since then, I have been observing this bacteria and viruses, and I looked at it. Cleaning hospitals, no problem. You got to clean it. I wrote a letter to Tony Blair. Please go clean the hospital. They thought I was a madman. What happened? The result was fantastic. Why? They compared clean hospitals infection rate, dirty hospital infection. Multiple, you know, staff changing rate, and the other one is where there is food. No turnover, no stuffs. Local doctors, no local doctors. The result was dirty hospitals were better. There was less infection. The other one did. So they were a bit puzzled. They said, gosh, how can it happen? So there's a um, new commentary, what university? They did this research. Let's find out what happened. So they went around swabbing and they found that there were more bacteria in this hospital which are resistant. Why? Because the fumigation killed all the good germs. Clean. Alcohol. No way. Never used at all. Never used in spray. You know why? Fermentation technique. The greedy alcoholic spirit manufacturers decided let's put more antibiotic because the more bacteria die, the yield is going to be higher. Now Spirit has got more bacteria. Some of them we know, some of them we don't. Because if antibiotics can't kill them, how can the spirit kill them? There are two ways, but whatever it is, it does. Hand washing, fantastic. I said, look, let's stop the population growing. Let's stop the infection occurring. Because the more infection occurs, more bacteria is going to be around. The more bacteria they will go and educate others as well. Nobody listen. We know about viral shedding. It's the same thing with bacteria. Oh, no, 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 we can get the antibody. Why? Because at that time, the economy was booming. They thought we are all conquered the earth. We are Americans, we are English, we have a lot of money. Who the hell is this little Indian fellow telling me? Yeah? That's it. What happened? Hand washing. Alcohol gel. Even in Bangalore, I can't believe it. Thousand rupees on water. One year it should last. That's what happened. MRSA trained all the good staff of office and made them more virulent. 
So it is spreading around in the town center now. It's not only in the hospital, and that's what happens. Even small cuts, alcohol based risk. In like World Health Organization, yeah? then he puts it on the bottom as well. Oh, no reason to believe, you know, because that one must have given a lot of money there. It may not go into that. So the BMAB said, no, 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 the nurses can't prescribe. They become nurses or becoming doctors. Shouldn't I keep quiet and mind my own business? No, I didn't. Why? Because I prescribe my antibiotics, aren't they? I've been struggling to make people understand when to give, how to give, how much to give, when to stop, when to change. I've been struggling for 10 years, more than 10 years, since 1989. These nurses sitting there, I'm talking to a friend about atypic pneumonia. Next day I see people coming back to me, tummy pain. I said, why are you coming now? Tell me what happened. Oh, I went and saw the nurse, she gave me erythromycin. I said, for what? Sore throat. How much has she given? 500 milligrams. I didn't know there is a difference between 500 milligrams erythromycin and 250, 500 milligrams of homoxacin. She was literally producing gastritis for everybody. And that is what happened. And I couldn't keep quiet. So we protested. And then they decided, let's make triage calls. You know, patients are sick, the call. Who runs them? Teenagers. An Indian who comes there, no, you can't go. You have to pass plan. So I asked the general medical council, I have to pass that. So what do you, what does the word doctor mean then? You say a doctor passing from India has to pass flat to prove he's safe. A nurse who sat with me and looked at me as an observer is telling me I should be giving, giving amoxicillin, I should be penicillin. So I couldn't understand this, really. And that's what happening. I was interested in not giving antibiotics. We don't want antibiotics to be abused. But do they listen? That's it. It's going on every day, day by day. Increased emergency, less than five years. You know what? They've increased almost doubled in the last 10 years. Why? Because nurses are the friend line. They can't make out the difference. So they just send everybody. What is the diagnosis there? LRTI and URTI. These are the common causes of admission into hospital. First, you must find out what URTI is. I don't know whether it's tonsillitis, pharyngitis. So now, Colin writes, he wants a tool. He wants a tool for these people to decide whether the patient is sick or not sick. If he's sick, he comes into hospital, so they have to sit and calculate, scoring. His head is 21, 31. I mean, what's wrong with medicine, man, really? So here, I uh, wrote that the one other countries emulate UK experience because India is following. There is one very well known uh, doctor, yes, 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 from here, who wants to bring nurses into practice. Yeah, I have listened to him outside and I think he is one man. I don't care who he is, but if he does so, I will also put a case against him that he is actually harming people because my duty is to protect my patients and my people. We are humanitarians. We are not doctors who are here to skip the cash there, kind of thing. So, sepsis, UK. 44,000 people die every year. Sepsis, they can't diagnose. That's a disgrace. Yeah? Our freedom is gone. So, I developed this little magnet. Give it to the nurse. Please keep this. If there are three red, send them to the hospital. If there are two red, send them to me. If there is one red, ask them to make a phone call. If there are three green, you have a look. I bifurcated, I gave it, so they looked at it. They didn't like it, did they? Because they want to feel like dog. I can't even wear the stethoscope properly. Anybody knows what's that? Have you ever seen this? Intensive care. I'm disappointed that you didn't know. Because this is essential to diagnose otitis media. Do you know how much it costs in UK? Because they miss it. They diagnose every year pain as otitis media. 44 million pounds. Pneumatic autoscope. Never diagnose otitis media without it. And what's the problem? Infection spreading. Who's at risk? It's not only patient, you are at risk. So I went into digital, internet things. And there are so many technology. Look at that. Good, isn't it? They'll come out with this. This is another one. All these things I'm integrating. Literally, I can run an intensive care half ward sitting here in my toilet. That is the uh, advance we have been. And it's a growing business. So this is my little creation. My 
means medical advice you access. The blue one is for parents, the green one is for you. So I'm really creating a group of doctors with their patients. So that there is no panic. The boss of the hospital need not come and say, why are you doing that? He should have an X-ray. No, he doesn't have an X-ray. He doesn't need an X-ray. No, you have to, because the cash flow is going to go down. So you deal with it. So it's an interlink. How does it work? The one of the stethoscope is for the patient, the one of the seminar is for you. It's a child's play. You don't have to be a computer literate, you don't have to have any knowledge of anything. Everything is done for you already. Get your smartphone and you can download the apps. You can also send me an email. Register. Just register your name. And then you choose what you want. You want to offer a telephone, a text message, email, video calls. Then, that's fine. That's it. I have patient with symptoms, notes. And then you can add patients. You can create your own database. Just like at this point. And it's ready to go. All that you have to do now is to advertise and tell the patients, please download Dr. Maya. And as soon as you, your photo will appear as a doctor. So they can just say, that is my doctor. And then it's legal. So it's easy, easy process. And here, I have symptoms list. It might be two symptoms. It may be three symptoms. It doesn't matter. You just add the symptoms, write what you think. You can say headache, don't worry, call 999 or come here immediately. Doesn't matter. The patient is going to read that. So when one two red is there, it says consult a doctor. So you can either directly book an appointment or you can send an email. So when three are there, when the patient touches this get advice button, it automatically sends you an email saying that Kumar from Kalas Palyal had these symptoms. His telephone number is so and so. Three red, go to emergency, two red, the same kind of thing. Three means nurse. We can also label it as non-emergency 24 hours. We can also increase it if necessary. You can tailor it to your requirement. And then you create it. Then when the patient calls, I've given you another one. You can write notes, you can prescribe, you can also send that. And if there are three symptoms which are infection, the app will tell you that this fellow who's coming now has got infection. So he may have Ebola, he may have unknown infections coming tomorrow. You are already ready, you know. You just tell them, please go to isolation hospital. Don't come here. First get it cleared up. Then come here. You can die but it doesn't matter, but don't keep me and my patients inside the world. Am I right? That is Savanai. It came as a vision. I thought it was stupid. I had this Savanai, Savanai coming in. Oh, no, what that place is. And now I know. It is basically saying innovation. I had created Maya, innovation, integration, initially to identify infected individuals and isolate. 